If your JavaScript work frequently involves HTML and using the DOM, you may find it valuable to use data attributes for establishing settings or other data about DOM elements. In this tutorial, we will look at data attributes and how to use them with JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help to bridge the gap between novice and expert. Today we are talking about data attributes, a way to add metadata to HTML elements. Now first, let me give a common example that I use frequently that uses data attributes. Now, if some of you have been listening for some time, you've probably heard me say that most common thing I work on in JavaScript is online courses. I do a lot of work in online courses. And one area where I use data attributes is to indicate whether a particular div or another element needs to be recorded or not. For example, as I create these courses, there are questions throughout the course at times. And some of those questions I want recorded, some don't. So a way I can determine that is by simply putting a data attribute with that particular div that has the question or form that has a question, whatever that element may be. And then I write the code simply to look for those data elements and process based upon what that data element says. And so that's a pretty common example for me. And I've seen a lot of other different ways to use these data attributes. So first, let's look at what data attributes are, and then we'll take a look at an example. So this slide that I'm showing now we're going to use our example, but first let's take a look at the bullet items and information on those. So first, data attributes allow the storing of extra information on a standard HTML element. It is basically, a way to describe it, it's basically an attribute that you create. And so a data attribute is any attribute that starts with D-A-T-A hyphen. So in the parentheses there, there's an example, data hyphen term. That is an, a data attribute. Now JavaScript provides a simple syntax for retrieving the data that is associated with a data attribute. And it's simply, you designate the element, use the dot syntax dot data set dot the portion of the data attribute following the data hyphen. So right here, this example term, we use term to access whatever data is associated with that data attribute. That's how we go about accessing it. Finally, just a quick note about support. IE 11 and above provides support for the data set here. Now, if you're using Internet Explorer below that, then you're going to want to use the get the standard get attribute method to retrieve the data associated with that particular attribute. So prior to IE 11, data set is not supported. Now other browsers support this data set and so using JavaScript, you can access the data using this pattern right here. All right, let's look at the example we're going to do. So first, let me describe it. I'm going to use these same li tags. These are all li tags. And a couple of them, when they click on them, the text is going to change to some additional text. Probably not the kind of thing you want to do, but it's kind of a fun example and shows how we can use these data attributes. Now, not all of them will respond to that click. And so we'll have a way to designate which should respond and which shouldn't. So let's first take a look at the HTML page. Here is the HTML page and here's the LI tags that make up those bullet items. Now, in the first three, I've added some data attributes. I have a data show attribute and I've either set that to true or false. 
This is the data attribute that's going to indicate whether or not this li tag will respond to a click event. Now I decided what that should be. I decided it should be show. When you're creating attributes, that's what you get to decide. Now I also have a data attribute text that has some additional text in here. And basically what I have here, some possible elements, div, header, li, p, image. So some additional text for this particular bullet item that I've added. Once again, I determined what that data attribute should be. Now this fourth bullet item doesn't have one yet. I'm gonna have us create that one. So data dash show, and I'm gonna set this one equal to true. Now notice where I'm creating these data attributes is inside the tag itself. So inside the angle brackets that define that tag where all other attributes would go. So here's an ID and then we begin adding our data attributes. Whoops, I messed the W there, Let me add that. Second data attribute, data text, and I'm gonna set that equal to, for previous versions of IE, you're going to use get attribute. to retrieve data. All right, so that's what we're gonna add there. So now we have two data attributes in the fourth li tag. Let me save that and let's move to our JavaScript file where we will set up the JavaScript. Now, first thing I wanna do is select all the li tags because those are the ones I'm going to be adding the event listener to, to respond to the click event. So I'm gonna create a variable, lis, and set that equal to document. I'm going to use query selector all to select the li tags. If you're not familiar with query, query selector all, I will include a link to another tutorial that discusses query selector all. Now, when we use query selector all, it will grab all the li tags, but it grabs them as a node list not as an array. And so I wanna convert them to an array so I can work with them easier. And this technique is also discussed in another tutorial that I'll include a link to. So LIS array, we're going to set that equal to array dot from, whoops. Very simple way to convert these to an array. And then I simply put LIS. Now that this is an array, I can use the for each method of arrays to cycle through each element that's in this array, cycle through each element and add an event listener to it. That's what I'm going to do with for each. Once again, if you're not familiar with for each, I'll include a link to a tutorial for, for that. And all of these links will be in the description section. So the way I set this up is LIS for each. This is a method on arrays. And this is a higher order function. And so because for each is a higher order function, I need to pass in a function to tell it what to do. So the way it works is it's going to cycle through each element in the array and it's going to invoke that function for those elements. So here is what I wanna pass in. Anonymous function, so function, and then it's going to accept the element as it cycles through that array. Now we can specify what we want to do with each of those elements. And I want to add an event listener. And the event I want it to respond to is the click event. Now what is it going to do? When it is clicked on, well, we need to add another function that will be invoked when the click event occurs. And here's where we put what will happen when that element is clicked on. And so here's where we begin using the data attributes. So first, I wanna put an if statement because I wanna check to see if the show data attribute is set to true. So I do it like this. The element right here, so the HTML element dot data set dot show. 
if that is equal to true, now notice I do that as a string because that's what it's returning is a string. If that's equal to true, then we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the inner HTML of that element and set it equal to the other data set. So notice how I retrieve those data sets. I don't put data hyphen show or data hyphen text. I just put the part that is after the hyphen. That's how I retrieve it. Now we could have done this another a number of different ways. We could have set it up so if data show is equal to true, then we would add the event listener. I chose to do it this way. Obviously there's multiple approaches. And really this is a simple example to show you how the data attributes work. So let me save that. Let's go out and we will refresh this. Now let me get all of the bullets up first. Now let's see what happens if we click this first one. Ah, the text changes some possible elements. Div, header, LIP, IMG. What happens if we click the second one? Nothing happens because the data attribute is set to false. The data hyphen show attribute is set defaults. Same with the third one. If I click this fourth one, IE 11 plus su provides support. For previous versions, use get attribute to retrieve data. So it went in and changed the inner HTML for those elements. All right, so two parts. The way we deal with it in JavaScript, and really right here is where we're dealing with those data attributes in JavaScript, we use data set to do that, and also how you set them up in HTML. We have two data attributes, data hyphen show and data hyphen text. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to your comments. To continue learning, here are some suggestions. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you're ready to dive into full courses, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.